This past weekend, Denny Villeneuve's latest film, Dune, finally opened in the United States. So today we're gonna stop and rank Denny Villeneuve's films from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of Denny Villeneuve's films. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list, and I would love to see yours. As we go into this, I didn't include his Canadian films. I wanted to, but October just turned out to be a very busy month for me, and I simply didn't have time to get them watched, so I didn't include them, though I really wanted to. Sorry about that. Let's get started. Coming in in last place, Enemy. Now with this film, I do think that Villeneuve delivered the film he was trying to make, but on a matter of taste and how my brain is wired, this is not really my sort of thing. Now from beginning to end, I was intrigued by the mystery of what was taking place. I was paying attention. The film didn't overstay its welcome, but by the time you get to the end, it's for me, ambiguous to a fault. Some people appreciate the fact that it is this metaphoric film where you're supposed to fill in the blanks and you get to the end of it and you can have all kinds of discussions about what everything meant, but that sort of thing doesn't particularly interest me all that much. I don't want to talk with anyone about what all the spiders meant inside of the film. So that's sort of like allegorical, metaphoric storytelling where what's happening on screen is much more a representation of something rather than meant to be taken literally. I know some people love that. I'm just not wired for that sort of thing. And so then I watch it and I'm frustrated because I, I want a more concrete explanation as to what's going on. And it builds intrigue about why is this happening and what does it really mean? And, and I want an answer to that, not a discussion afterwards about all of our different interpretations. And so it's a film that I can appreciate why other people would like this, why other people resonate with it, but it's one I, I don't see myself just re-watching for fun. In fifth place, Arrival. And as a point of reference, all the rest of the movies on this list are very good to great. So even though this movie is in next to last place, I would give it a very positive review. And one of the things that Denny Villeneuve has established himself as over the last six or seven years is someone that consistently delivers grown-up, sci-fi. Like we live in a time when the marketplace is dominated by PG-13 sci-fi blockbusters that are designed for spectacle, cheap entertainment. And I love that stuff. I've built my channel all around that stuff. But one of the things that's cool about his career is that he's making much more cerebral, heady sci-fi. They have much deeper meaning to them, and I'm glad he's able to make these films. And the one that kind of kick-started this little path for him was Arrival, that at its core, it's a sci-fi film about aliens coming to Earth. It has big, gigantic global conflict to it, but it's not an action film at all. It's all about language and misunderstanding, and it takes kind of the twist about what it does with language and the perception of reality, and it uses that almost like a metaphor for different ways of seeing the film, and then it incorporates that into the storytelling. So the twist gimmick of the film ties into how the story is told, and that's when you have a film with a cohesive concept to it. And then all the big ideas are grounded by attaching it to this central character who when she's introduced, we think they're showing us images of her past and what has made her kind of reserved and withdrawn, but in fact it's showing us things from the future, which just makes for a very fascinating way to do a character arc because it's so non-linear as she's in feeling the emotions of events that haven't happened yet and she doesn't know exactly what they mean and us as the audience interpret them incorrectly when we're first introduced to them. And so it just makes for an interesting way to tell a story and that's one of the fun things that you can do with sci-fi, to put ideas out there that tickle your brain just a little bit. It just puts this idea in your head about how does language shape the way we experience reality? And it runs with that in a way that has an escapist element to it, once again, without needing shoot, shootouts and superheroes. Now, the reason it's a little bit lower on this list is that uh, it's not one that I like 
get big, gigantic emotions out of it. It's not one that I kind of throw on as often. In fourth place, Sicario, Villeneuve's tense thriller about the war on drugs. And this is a film that's remarkable for its ability to just put you on the edge of your seat and just feel this building sense of dredge, dread and anxiety from beginning to end. From the opening sequence, you feel you are in a dangerous world, and then you follow Emily Blunt as she goes off trying to battle the drug cartels, and the whole time there's this looming sense of danger, dread, like something could go wrong at any moment in time. So simply driving across the border turns out into a shootout in the middle of this very busy, packed road with traffic in it. And then even as we're, you're going on these missions, you don't really know who's good and who's bad. We know Emily Blunt seems to have a good moral compass, but the people around her, the mission that she's on, she knows that she believes in the greater good, but the specifics of what's taking place is incredibly morally ambiguous, in particular when it comes to the title Sicario character that is going after bad guys and doing very bad things to bad guys and their families. And so it just creates this story that makes you uncertain what you should feel at any particular moment. You're just as confused about the situation as Emily Blunt's character. I can't think of too many movies that sustain and maintain this amount of tension throughout the runtime without just totally exhausting the audience before the runtime is over. This one, you're at the edge of your seat, but you can make it to the credits and then finally you can breathe a sigh of relief. And it's just a great example of how to tell a story that builds tension and how an individual sequences to keep also ratcheting up the tension, and have it feel earned and meaningful. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to join me down below in the comment section, share your ranking of Denny Villeneuve's films. If you've seen his Canadian films, be sure to include them in your ranking so I can know which ones I need to check out. Also, I've done a bunch of these director rankings before. M. Night Shyamalan, Christopher Nolan, David Fincher, Quentin Tarantino. You can check those out somewhere up here whenever this video is over. In third place, Dune. Now, this is a movie I went into with very little prior knowledge of the world of Dune, kind of got swept up into all of the world building that was taking place. It is a flawless production in how it realizes and visualizes this distant world that we're off to. Everything looks believable. The special effects are all convincing. So you feel like you are visiting a new time and a new place. And then beyond that, it tells this big, gigantic story designed for adults, where it's not about the big action sequences, though there are some of those. It's about this complex world with dynamics that aren't exactly easy to categorize who is good, who is bad, who is an ally, and who is just using who. It's very dense and you have to pay attention and the movie takes its time establishing everything. So when the betrayals happen, when the victories happen, when someone steps up the plate and finally embraces their destiny, it feels earned. It feels meaningful. The thing holding this one back from the top spot, because this one potentially could have been in the top spot, is that it didn't feel like a complete story. It felt like a lot of setup for a world I'm very excited to explore, and then the credits roll. Felt like the pilot for the most epic TV series of all time, and I can't wait to see the next episode, but it didn't really resolve many of the plot lines at all. They're all still kind of dangling out there. So potentially, if when we get part two, I might like this one even more, but as is, without some of that resolution, I don't think I can put it in a top spot yet. Our runner up, Prisoners. Potentially Villeneuve's most conventional film in that if you look at just the basic premise and setup, it sounds like any number of other stories about kidnapped children in the investigation trying to catch them before it's too late. But 
that allows him to tell this complex story with a bunch of mysteries where it takes its time to slowly reveal what's going on. And so you, like the characters in the story, are slowly piecing together what's happening. And the characters themselves are designed to not be easily categorized. Whereas you have a father who deeply cares about his missing child, but is also doing horrible things in the pursuit of trying to rescue his child. And whereas in a certain sense, what he is doing is directed at the wrong person, it is in fact in the right direction. And so it's, there's that complex morality to almost everything that's going on as to nothing is quite as simple as it seems. No dynamic is clear, cut and dry, good, bad, right direction, wrong direction. All of it has shades of gray in it in this pursuit of trying to rescue these children and catch who's truly behind all of this. And it just does a great job of putting all these clues out there so that when you get to the end, it feels earned. And when you're moving towards the finale, you've pieced together some of it, but you haven't quite put together all of it just quite yet, like the characters. And because we're seeing both sides of a story, we're a little bit ahead of each of them and we're waiting for them to communicate. And so if this person just knew what this person knew, suddenly they could put it together where the audience is. Other thing it does really well, like Sicario, it just has this looming sense of dread. As these kids have been kidnapped, we're well aware of the danger that could potentially happen here. And you don't know if this is gonna be a movie with a really dark ending, a happy ending, a bittersweet ending. You just feel the danger, the dread, the tension. And even though this is a very long movie, you're captivated from beginning to end. Big part of that is there's a bunch of just fantastic performances here. It's just a great mix of a bunch of elements. And while the basic setup might sound familiar, the execution is excellent. But coming in in first place is Blade Runner 2049. I would say that this film is better than the original Blade Runner, but I've never been the biggest fan of the original Blade Runner. But once again, like Dune, this is just a flawless film on technical levels. The design, the score, the look of everything, it is absolutely flawless. You believe that this is a real time and a real place that we are going to. And so it makes for this immersive world. And it also feels like a gigantic world that we're going to. It, it's large scale, even though it is just kind of this noir mystery, this investigation into what exactly is going on. Beyond that, it just does a great job of kind of exploring these ideas about what makes someone human and what makes them alive and that line between synthetic and artificial intelligence and at what point in time have we just created artificial life and that we need to learn to respect that and treat that with care and explores all of it in this fascinating, interesting way where you're following the synthetic person and you really care about the journey he's on his character arc as someone designed to be very muted and restrained, but he does grow and change and has an actual arc and is contemplating his reality and his purpose and reevaluating what he thinks about himself and the memories put in his head in light of the information that he's discovering. And by the end of it has to make choices to, to respect the life of others in a way that in light of where he starts as someone that's just living for the mission, it's a very compelling arc. For me, it was a very satisfying film. And this is what I want adult sci-fi to be like, that it has big ideas, it has big worlds. And as much as I love my sci-fi roller coaster ride films, I love that they're taking a chance and allowing him to make this Dune or Rival that aren't going to be billion dollar films, but that doesn't mean that they're not worth investing large amounts of money in to allow these films to exist. And of the bunch, this is the one that just meant the most to me. So it comes in 
at number one. If you enjoyed this video, I've done a bunch of other director rankings. You can check them out in that playlist right over there. Tarantino, Fincher, Nolan, all that fun stuff right over there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.